Okay, in this video we're going to take a, uh, a brief look at how we might use some of the features of a uh, real-time spectrum analyzer to help find uh, the EMI and emissions problems with a circuit board and how some of the tools and features of uh, the analyzer can be used to help you out. So we're looking at a display here that we call uh, DPX, Digital Phosphor Spectrum Processing. What this does is it gives you the kind of this multicolor display that is a composite result of almost 300,000 discrete Fourier transforms a second and uh, laying them all on top of each other and giving you this color grade of uh, you know, how often things are occurring. Uh, in this case when we look at uh, you know, various colors here, uh, the hotter colors like red and yellow are areas that are occupied most often and the cooler colors are things that are like the green and light blue and dark blue are areas that are occupied less often by these 300,000 spectrums a second that we're looking at. We're going to do this by looking at this little near-field probe. This one's uh, made by a company called uh, Beehive Electronics. Just a little uh, near-field magnetic loop probe. We'll be able to kind of scoot this around over the board, and as we do that, we can kind of see you know, what's going on in different areas of the board from an RF standpoint. Um, the real-time analyzer is kind of literally showing you live what's going on you know, in the spectrum as we kind of scoot across here. So we can literally see everything that's happening. We can see kind of these little transient little things that are going on like that. And, you know, steady state signals like these guys over here. You know, transient types of things that are kind of creating the light blue haze above things there. So we can learn about all kinds of things. And uh, we can set the RSA to do a couple of other things too. Um, you can go over here and uh, put on what we call a, uh, a spectrogram along with uh, the spectrum. And basically what this is, is the spectrum kind of moving and walking across. So as we're moving around on the board, if I pan back here far enough, you can kind of see if I'm moving around on the board, you can kind of see those changes going on on the spectrum at the same time. So this might give you a quick idea as you're going through to be able to see things and uh, understand kind of what's happening on the board there. But uh, let's say we wanted to you know, find a transient problem that we really want to go take a look at in more detail. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to turn off that... Uh, that spectrogram mode, go right back to the normal DPX spectrum. Okay, so now I can see kind of everything that's going on here. And uh, so uh, one thing we'll look at, for example, I found this interesting one on the board here. I can see all these, you know, these kinds of wiggly things like that guy going on right there. It's like, you know, what is that? Um, it helps sometimes to kind of look at those in the time domain and stretch them out a little bit. And we can do that by uh, going into displays here and I'm going to add a, a spectrogram. So let's add the spectrogram uh, to the displays here. And by doing that, what that does, we can take a chunk of data over time and then kind of stretch it out. And now if we look, say at this little wiggly thing that's over here, if we look at it on the spectrogram, you can kind of see it wobbling back and forth. So that's actually a spread spectrum clock. You can kind of see the behavior of that just uh, by being able to capture a snapshot of that over time, okay? and then uh, being able to kind of you know, look at that you know, and seamlessly in time to see how that's changing. So I can see I've got that spread spectrum clock, I've got a couple of other CW things. If you look carefully, I've got a little bursty thing going on right over here in the edge. Let me see if I can find that spot on the board here again. You see these little bursty things. Because in this display here, um, really each horizontal row is looking down at the top of a spectrum trace and the uh, colors are essentially the amplitude of that. So. You can learn a lot by looking at what's going on. You know, about, you might be able to determine what these signals are by looking at the repetition rate or looking at uh, what they're doing over time, what that spread check and clock is doing there. So you can learn an awful lot about things. Let's say we want to go and you know, really dig down into one particular signal. And I found one I was looking at earlier. Let's see if I can get the probe positioned right here. So if we look on the, the spectrum, uh, what we're seeing uh, is this kind of elevated blue area. This is over 100 megahertz wide. Okay, and it's, and it's only there infrequently because it's laid up, laid up in the blue. Most of the time we're seeing the noise floor here, but I got this infrequent burst that's very broad banded. So I we'll say, well, gee, what's, what's going on with that? Well, if we look at the spectrogram, I can see these horizontal lines, okay, and they're spaced at about 20 microseconds apart. In fact, another way to look at this, let's bring up a time domain view. Let's bring up, say, amplitude versus time, bring that up here. And with that display, now I can actually see those little bursts. This is showing me RF power versus time in that direction. 
So uh, if we look down here, we're looking at uh, about uh, 100 microseconds, so that's about 10 microseconds per division. So I can see that these little hairs are spaced out, uh, you know, spaced at about 20 microseconds per. So, uh, so I know that that's what's going on. So, so now I know the time domain nature of this signal. It's something that's occurring at about a, uh, a 20 microsecond period. I can see its effect in the spectrum over time. I can see how it's interacting with other signals by looking at the spectrogram. But let's say we want to go hunting on the board to see what's going on with that. And we're just picking this all up with an antenna lane here. Okay. One of the things we can do is let's trigger on that. Okay, now how could I trigger on that? There's a number of different ways. I could set up a little RF power trigger to trigger on that event. I could set up a frequency mask down in the spectrum and look at that. But the quickest and easiest way is something that we call a DPX density trigger. So I literally can right click on the display and say trigger on this. If I do that, I get this little box. I can position that box and move it right down into that area. So now each time the spectrum is crossing into that box, I'm triggering on that. And we can tell I'm triggering on it because if you look, say, even in the time domain, uh, that waveform now is stable with respect to my little trigger indicator, uh, which is way, way down there in the corner, a little, a little T here in the corner. So you can see I've got a kind of a nice stable uh, trigger. So now I know I'm triggering on that, spec that the, whatever event is causing that spectral energy. I'm triggering on that and, and giving you a synchronous display here. But now from a debug standpoint, what's really great is I can take the trigger output from the front panel here. See, I've got a BNC connection from that. I'm routing that up to channel 3 of my scope right here. So with channel 3, there it is. That's my trigger output pulse. So now, on the scope display, okay, I'm actually, you know, got a triggered uh, display here. So now I can take my probe, say, from channel 1. I've got my probe down here. And I was doing this earlier, and I found that... Uh, Let's go back up and look at the display. I found that if I probe, let's see, I think it's right down here is a, is a chip just underneath here. Uh, I probe uh, the first pin of that, I can see a clock signal. And what I see on the scope is that this clock signal is synchronous, and you can see it's, it's a stable display, because I'm triggering on my trigger output pulse from the RSA. The waveform I'm getting from, from channel one, if I can hold the probe on there, here we go, is stable with respect to that trigger. So that tells me that this clock that I'm looking at here is somehow related to this spectral event because it is synchronous to the trigger event that we we're looking at there. So by using these kinds of tools and knowing the design of the board and, and what's going on here, you can now relate some of these spectral emissions and these transient type of events to actual you know, signals and systems and things that are happening on your board there. So it may really help. Uh, shorten your debug time and trying to understand where you, these transient EMI and emissions issues are coming from. So anyway, the tools we're using here is just a, a real-time spectrum analyzer. Gives you the ability to trigger on these signals and then uh, we're using a, a scope here to go look at uh, time domain signals on the board and uh, synchronizing them together with the trigger signal. So uh, hopefully uh, you can use this information to help you find problems on a circuit board you might be working on.